we have here an IBM dictation device. It's a pretty hefty little recorder. And, uh, you know, I'm a collector of reel-to-reel -reel tapes. 34 ounces. Let's see what that is. Uh, or pounds. Two pounds. A little over two pounds. So, pretty hefty little box. Let's see how many grams. About a thousand grams. 900 grams. I don't know if there are batteries in it or not. But it comes with this leather case, which needs some cleaning. And, uh, uh, there's a, understand that's the microphone, and this is a, a external attachment, microphone and external attachment, and uh, I think this just re holds it on to the leather case, <clears throat> so it's got a snap here, you can see the corrosion, I believe this is the battery compartment, but what I want you to see, let's see if I can get it out of the case here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's tight. Turn it right side up. What is very interesting about this unit is that it is a belt, it uses a belt for the recording medium. So we press this release here and this whole thing should slide out like that. And this is the recording belt. Looks like a belt sander belt, doesn't it? And let's see, this should flip up. See the belt there? So there's a recording head here that records the audio onto the track on just slowly slowly advances this direction and records and uh, then you can select the position of the tape the uh, belt by advancing it up and uh, back and forth there's a speaker there's a gain control here this is for aircraft and noisy locations, put it there. And for low voices and quiet room, put it over here. So that's a gain control, I would imagine. Let's see. It's an IBM model. Let's see if we can see that. I'll zoom in. But that is the belt, the recording belt that the audio comes on to. Now look at this, this is bad, this is really bad. Corrosion, battery corrosion. And this is the battery compartment. And it's my understanding that this connector, let's see if we can get it closed back up, yeah. This connector is the external power. So I'm gonna have to do some research on that, to see what kind of power it takes I don't know right offhand. And this window, when the tape is moving, you'll see the IBM move, the little word IBM move through the, see the IBM there? You'll see that pass through the window It'll know, so you know it's actually moving. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, okay, so let's see if we can get this battery compartment open. so tight I don't I, I'm assuming that it turns and then pops out it certainly doesn't turn easily and is not going to just pop out this is a little bit of worrisome here uh, <clears throat> well, let's just take it one step at a time here and let's spray this with some corrosion stuff. It's expensive deoxidization spray. And 
and uh, works as a lubricant too. So let's see if we can get this cap off or at least get it turning. Oh yeah, it's turning a lot better. <clears throat> I don't want to bunge up the the uh, chrome. Let's try a little more liquid. Oh yeah, that, that really helped a lot. Yeah, now I can actually turn it with my hands. Kinda, sorta. There we go, oh brother. Look at that mess. <clears throat> oh my. My understand this is a special mercury battery. Oh. I'm going to put on a mask. I don't want to be breathing all this junk. So let me, uh, let me put on a mask and some gloves and we'll go from there. Okay. I'm back with a mask and gloves. I don't know if there's any, I'm sure there's mercury in here. But, oh my. It's a mess. That's a cell inside the shell here. Uh, yeah, you can see the battery shell right there. So hopefully if we can get some of this corrosion cleaned up, we might actually be able to pull this battery out. And then we'll have to use some kind of a cleaner See if I can twist that enough to, there we go. Look at that. Oh my gracious. And the end of the battery. Well, no, that's the end of the battery. So it's a Mallory battery. I don't know what kind of voltage it is. We'll have to look that up. 10.7 volts. 10.7 volts. Wow. What a mess, huh? So what in the world is paper there? Paper lining. Look at that. Terrible cardboard lining. Not sure if it was just a, a liner for the battery. Oh, okay, like a service ticket or something. Yeah, service ticket was stuck in there. It's actually a decal. Oh, yeah, sticker. See? Huh. So, we definitely need to clean that up before we do anything. Okay, so what I might be able to do is, let me, let me drop this out. I don't want to mess up this belt. I'm a little worried about that. Because I don't think I can just find these belts just anywhere. And if I get that corrosion all over that belt, I'm afraid it's going to tear it up. So I need to, and I don't know how brittle the belt is, see. Um, 
looks pretty fragile, but it does turn. So I guess that's a good thing. What I could do is try to get the belt out of there without ruining it. So they don't have to worry about that. So let's just try that. Let's see if we can gently get the belt to come out. But it's one piece. Doesn't see any. I don't see any tears on it. So that's wonderful. So let's just set it over here. Another way. And uh, all right. So I guess then this is a drive motor, probably that drives the belt. So this is what we need to get cleaned up here without destroying it. That's the direction of the IBM word goes, so you know how to, which direction to put the tape or the belt, I guess you'd call it. First thing I need to do is get this mess cleaned up and so I'm not contaminating everything I touch. So we'll get rid of all this. I'm even going to get rid of the sticker because it's got all kinds of crud on it. And then this is the battery. What's left of the battery end for the this end of the battery. I guess that would have come in contact with that right there because of the spring in the bottom of the battery compartment would have pushed this battery all the way up against that connector so this is going to have to be cleaned up too and polished which we can do with the dremel not a problem and then uh, we'll take it real easy on this opening so we can get this back in and turn and latch you can see the spring mechanism that kind of holds it in place right there it's it's gotten corroded but it may clean up. Yeah, there's the other side of it, see? That spring right there. So the thing comes down in and turns and pops into place right there. So we'll wash this real good and then find out what would clean that corrosion. But this definitely is. I need to get a picture of it. Let me zoom in here. There we go. All righty. And the service ticket. So let me get this mess cleaned up and I'll be back. Okay. Uh, I, I pulled the whole thing out and got some of the battery compartment cleaned up. You can see there's still quite a bit of corrosion there. And I buffed this rim so that the the uh, cover fits back in okay and uh, let's see there we go and it snaps back in place it's a little loose but there's no battery in there to hold it snug so that fits and i taped this gate closed thinking there might have been a micro switch that engaged and disengaged for the power to come on i can't get it powered up. I've, I checked the battery connector here or the external power connector to make sure I had the polarity correct and I believe that's that's been that's set correctly. Let me let you see in here. There's a washer right there. That, there we go. These little washers have to go back in between the plate and the frame but anyway there's the microphone of course you can see the speaker 
but I'm not getting any power and I'm not my battery meter is not whittling. So I don't think I've got power to the main board yet. So I'm just getting started here. I suspect that there's an interlock switch somewhere here that's not triggered. And um, I don't see anything that uh, the belt is about ready to crack. If you'll look closely here. The drive belt. Yeah, right there's a crack. So I'll have to 3D print another belt for it, I'm sure, eventually. Um, there's a switch here that closes right there. And that tracks the thing. When it comes all the way down and touches that switch, it shuts the motor off. I'm sure that's what that switch is. And there's a switch right here. You can see it as I move it. That is end of the recording. Detects the end of the recording. I don't see any other interlock switches anywhere, but I'm sure there's one in here somewhere that's corroded or whatever that's not engaged. There doesn't seem to be any switches that detect the presence of the belt. This, I tape this because this roller, um, well, now that roll, there, there we go. See, is might be a switch. I don't know if that's just a tension. I think that might be a tension adjustment. This is a tension adjustment to make sure that there's just enough tension on the belt and no more. So that's 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 not a switch. There's no switch in that anywhere. So I don't know. I'm just continuing to look. There's probably a corrosion, corroded micro switch somewhere. You see the uh, fishing line or cable right here that's pulled right here. It's pulled into the rewind. That's rewind right there. Um, or review. So I think this is off. This is forward. So this is off. This is play, this is rewind. And then in order to record, you push this down and slide it up. Okay, I continued to dig around and eventually found that there was an open switch in the uh, electrical system that was preventing the power from passing through the entire device. As you'll see, I jump it here in just a second. Once I got the motor running, uh, I discovered that the motor was very weak, and you can hear the brushes really creating a lot of electrical noise through the amplifier. So I ended up having to take the motor apart, and um, the brushes and commutator were just too far gone to really get the motor to run consistently. Okay, now we're switching to the second IBM 224 unit 
that seems to be in a little better condition. And what I've done is I have installed the belt and the gear that were damaged. I've installed a good belt and a good gear into this unit and you can see that it's running just fine right now. And um, there is one other interesting difference between version one and version two. And version two has two speeds, has a speed switch, 10 minutes and 20 minutes setting. So on the 10 minute setting, that belt runs much faster and you get a little better fidelity in your recording. And in, of course, the 20 minute setting, it runs a half speed. All right, we're testing one, two, three on high speed, 10 minute instead of 20 minute. Testing one, two, three, I'm about a foot and a half away from the microphone, talking in a little louder voice than normal. So let's rewind it and see if we got any kind of recording going on on this IBM 224. Let's rewind a foot and a half, 10 minute instead of 20 minute. speed 10 minute instead of 20 minute testing one two three i'm about a foot and a half away from the microphone talking in a little louder voice than normal so let's rewind it and see if we got any kind of recording going on on this ibm 224 okay terrific um figured out what external power connects to this particular model, which is version two, does not have an external power connector, which would be here. Let me show you the original version. Here, you can see the external power right there in the middle, the little jack. And this one, they switched the microphone position and the power, the external connector. So there's no power connector here. But taking it apart and doing some tests, I discovered the battery connections here for 11 volts. So I replaced the pulley that was broken, or the gear, the small gear, and the belt. Here's the uh, drive belt, the fragments of the drive belt that were left. So we've got a successful repair as long as this belt remains useful but it's definitely pulling the belt through it's recording and playing back some of the original let's see listen to the original recording of somebody in the nursing department nice strong audio and this tuning adjusts puts the recording and playback head in the middle of the record track so that's what that adjustment is you can see as I move it here you can see that the head moved back and forth and you find the sweet spot by just slightly adjusting it and it puts it in the middle of the track Okay, next, of course, you know, I can't test the tape recorder without actually trying some music on them, even though many of these tape recorders were never really designed to play music, record and play music. But I think you're going to be surprised at the uh, wow and flutter. I also hooked up an antique uh, amp meter here just to see what kind of current the system is drawing. Looks like about 70 to 80, maybe up to 100 milliamps.
Yeah, you gotta love that random access. So much better than a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Okay, we're going to change the belt so we've opened it up here and uh, just reach in here and uh, pull it out there we go pull the belt out all right it's the one that we recorded music on. And so we're going to uh, look at the Magna, three inch Magna belts. And let's see, I've got <clears throat> several here, I think. And you can tell these have been used because they've got you can see the lines in there. So they've been run over the thing. This looks like a brand new one right here. Doesn't look like it's ever been used. Let's go. That one looks brand new. That one looks brand new. So let's take this one. This has got some recording on it. And uh, let's put it on the tape machine dictation machine okay there we go get it all the way on there we go all the way closes up Slides back in place. Let's uh, unscrew this and get it closed back up. There we go. And my connector is not cooperating, so there we go. Let's pull the connector off, the battery, put it back in place, there we go. <clears throat> Close it up into the leather, and now plug it back in, and we'll bypass the uh, amp meter. There we go. Let's see if we have anything recorded on this one. Don't hear anything. So somebody may have erased it. Okay, let's stop it. And let's adjust the... Um, we're going to pop it open. And adjust the speed to 20 minutes and we're going to leave it on high sensitivity which is uh, low low volume and let's close it back up start it at the beginning and record alrighty we're testing one two three we're checking on the IBM wait 
Let's make sure we've got it. Oh, <laughs> got to have power, don't we? The tape is moving. So let's do the record. We got a record uh, battery power. That is power meters turning on and we can see that the uh, tape is moving. You should see a red spot here. Just a second. There he is. Okay, so we're recording now on the IBM 224 and we're talking directly into the microphone here and we're running at slow speed at 20 minute speed so half speed i guess you would say and uh, i don't know what kind of quality we're going to get but let's rewind it and see what kind of uh, quality recording we have after running it on slow speed this time okay. and, uh, back it up Okay, there we go. Let's do the record. We got a record uh, battery power that is power meters turning on, and we can see that the uh, tape is moving. I was pointing to the counter there. Volume's level's a little bit low. Let's pop it open. Pop it open. Change the speed. Reconnect my power. And push play. Alright, so that was... Now, let's see if we get a little better volume on it now. We're uh, running at high speed. Our, our tape is running. You can see it. There it goes. So we are running, and uh, we're recording now, talking directly into the microphone. And uh, we're going to see if our volume level increases a little bit at a higher speed. That's typically the case when you're running a little faster tape speed. You get a little more gain on the recording level. So we're going to record, uh, we're going to rewind now. We're at track number 10, so we're going to back up to about track, fifth, uh, track 5. We're at track number 10, so we're going to back up to about track, fifth, uh, track 5. All right, so let's back up. Let's stop it. Let's back it up. I'd say that's about right. We're uh, running at high speed. So we are running, and uh, we're recording now, talking directly into the microphone. Volume's all the way up. And uh, we're going to see if our volume level increases a little bit at a higher speed. That's typically the case when you're running a little faster tape speed. You get a little more gain on the recording level. So we're going to record. Uh, we're going to rewind now. We're at track number 10, so we're going to back up to about track, fifth, uh, track 5. Okay, so there we go. The IBM 224 working beautifully and very pleased with the result. Um, so I swapped the belts out of the old model, which I have over here. I, I took the uh, drive pulley and the belt out of this unit. The motor on this is weak and will not start on its own. And so we uh, we're just uh, we've salvaged the belt and the drive gear out of this unit and have put it into this version two of the IBM 224. So there are two different versions. 
available. They had um, this version had all the wiring water, wired soldered directly into the circuit board. This model has plugs that disconnect, so you can disconnect the uh, parts and service them. Just unplugging the, uh, and it also had a lighter colored circuit board. This one also does not have a external power like this one does, separate external power. So I haven't tested this to see if an external connector will work on this. If you'll notice the plug, let's see if we can get them both on the screen here. There we go. You notice the plug here. So there's the two plugs and they look identical. So I would wonder if this plug will run, if this unit will run on external power using those two pins that we're using here on this one. So the plug here plugs into this connector and um, so yeah so I guess we could check that should be the same yes it is the same and the motor is running pretty sure but there's no belt drive on this remember we we, we salvaged the belt off of this so we have audio It's hard to tell whether the motor is actually running. We could put a belt on there and see if it's actually pulling, but that that power does work on the version one that we created for version two here. Back up to about track, uh, track five. All righty. So our connector that we made is working great. The power, external power for version two of the IBM.